I'll go ahead and uh, begin by introducing myself. So my name is Chris Penny. I handle uh, part of the academic program in the uh, United States. Um, I primarily have a focus on engaging student competition teams in the Americas. Uh, with that being said, I'll go ahead and turn it over to McGill and uh, let you guys go ahead and dive into things. So welcome to the webinar. Today we will present you how Siemens contributes contribute to our success as a student design team uh, who is developing a 100% electric from last style race car and race car and competing across North America. First, uh, let me introduce uh, you to our presenters today. Uh, there is me, Geneviève Antien Bouchard. I'm the co-captain of Megu Formula Electric and also third year student in mechanical engineering. Uh, we also have Aidan Gerkis, who is the other co-captain. He's in uh, fourth year uh, electrical engineering. Finally, David Green, our technical director. He's in fourth year um, mechanical engineering. So during this presentation, we'll present you a bit uh, about the uh, history of our team, who we are. Then we will talk about the main challenges we face in our team and all the different uh, Siemens software contribute in solving these problems. The software we are using are Siemens NX, FiberSim, Vsys, SimCenter Star CCM Plus, and SimCenter MF Tire. So our team, uh, every year we design, test, and build a 100% electric formula style race, race car, and we compete uh, across North America. So about our history, this is how it began. Uh, Mikhail's first Formula SAE team was formed in late 1994. The first project was a huge challenge because the university had no experience um, in race car or designing a car in general. The first prototype named uh, Boomerang had to be designed, built, tested and raced in less than six months. And the total cost of the program the, the program was $85,000, which was entirely raised uh, by the student team. So this is how it all started. Uh, next, and then we go a uh, big jump to 2010, the first hybrid version of the car. And then finally, uh, next, in 2014, uh, it's the first version uh, of an electric, completely electric vehicle. The combustion team was still building a combustion car at the same time. It's only in September 2017 that both teams merged together uh, to have a single design team named McGill Formula Electric. Uh, so now we're here. Uh, the last car we actually ran, uh, this is before COVID, um, broke the North American uh, record of acceleration, achieving 75 meters in 3.69 seconds and also won the overall FSA Lincoln uh, competition in 2019. Then uh, MFE21, which is this car, is the last one that is uh, that has been, been fully designed, uh, never got manufactured uh, due to COVID. It has a completely new design chassis that is especially made for electric vehicle, which is uh, CFRP Monaco. It also um, has four in-hub AMK motors, so one motor per wheel. Uh, decoupled suspension, in-house design and manufacture uh, battery management system, uh, a complete aerodynamic package, and more than 30 sensors uh, monitoring the vehicle performance. As you can see, the car evolves really rapidly because our team strives to be innovative and to have the fastest car possible. Um, here, I will show you a kind of a different evolution by, and it will open the door of start, starting uh, to talk about software. So this is, you can see, we found that picture of 1998 uh, of the FEA back in the days. And then we can see now, uh, next slide, the present uh, with Siemens software. So a little bit of evolution, uh, way more so sophisticated because uh, this really allow us to surpass ourselves um, every day and every year to have this uh, evolution all the time. Uh, so. I will let uh, David talk to you about uh, the first software you, we are using. Thank you, Genevieve, for the, uh, the introduction. Um, again, everybody, my name is David Green. I'm the technical director uh, for this year's design of MFE 21, as well as the MFE 22 new production prototype we're currently working on. And I'm gonna take a few minutes to talk to you about some of our challenges and successes in both the Siemens NX and the FiberSim software. 
So first things first, let's talk about the biggest challenge that we face. Uh, as an electric uh, automotive performance vehicle, we have a lot of part counts, very high part counts and many sub-assemblies and sub-assemblies within sub-assemblies. So being able to use a software that can handle a very complex CAD structure is something that we've struggled with in the past. As well, we have a very co collaborative workflow and many parts are being updated at many different amounts of time. So we need to be able to handle that um, effectively. Another problem that we're having is the endless handoff between our CAD software and our FEA software. We tend to go through a very large amount of iterations per design cycle. Some parts see upwards of 10, 15 iterations just based on CAD software or sorry, FEA software, and then it goes into a prototype process and gets iterated in the physical testing as well. So some of the benefits that NX has provided us is increased CAD stability. This is something that has really, really helped us um, in the past. Particularly, NX has a great ability to identify uh, errors that, that come up when, when loading our CAD. So we, we estimate we save about 20 hours per design cycle Whenever these errors uh, uh, present themselves, NX is very, very good at helping us isolate the problem and either fixing or destroying the problem so that we can move on with our design. Furthermore, we have industry leading service tools in NX, and this is particularly valuable for any of our composite chassis and our composite aero package. And the software it help itself is focused around sheet body manipulation, whereas other competitors are focused around solid body manipulation. So this really helps us further our design, focusing all on sheet body um, cadding. So the analyst handoff, this is something that really, really helps us when it comes to a mechanical part design. The seamless integration between NX and SimCenter allows us to transfer very quickly parts from the CAD environment to the finite element modeling environments and then to the simulation environments. We, we estimate that this saves us about 10 minutes per iteration of parts compared to having to export a file into an intermediate form such as STEP, Parasolid, um, et cetera, into another software and then reverting back to the, to the modeling environment. So for us, we see this ends up being about a total time save of about 40 hours per design cycle. So FiberSim itself is a, is a very innovative product that we, we've used to our advantage in the past few years of manufacturing a carbon fiber monocoque. So some of the challenges that we face in this design tend to be just how intricate our laminate design is. So here on the bottom left picture, you'll see this is how many different uh, ply zones or laminate zones, as we call them, we have throughout the chassis. In total, there is 364 individual plies varying of up to three different materials placed in varying patterns with varying overlaps throughout the entire chassis. It's very complex and in fact it takes about three weeks of round the clock uh, time manu to manufacture a full chassis of this size. So what happens is on the right here you can see this is a unidirectional fiber tape and what happens is when you're placing these with more manual techniques you end up getting splitting of the fibers and then your, your total parts does not react as how you designed it to be. So this is one of the major challenges that not only the automotive industry, but any industry that's using prepreg composites are facing right now. So how FiberSim actually helps us is through three main ways. They have an automated ply sequencing book. So I mentioned we have that 364 plies. Well, FiberSim allows us to orient them within the software and then automatically generates an instruction manual on how to assemble that. The instruction manual can be customized to be very clear and very um, user-friendly such that anyone who is not familiar with the design can easily manufacture this chassis. As well, some benefits we've seen in the past few years is in the manufacturability analysis with the relief cut simulation. Just referring back to the previous slide where I said there was that crack or that break in the unidirectional fiber tape, uh, we, can, we can now analyze that within the software itself and place strategic relief cuts that will uh, allow the fibers to drape through complex geometries much easier and will still get a very reliable parts and save a lot of time in manufacturing. Another thing it does is it automates all of our flat pattern generation. All 364 plies gets uh, automatically cut on a CNC ply cutter. And Siemens does this quite easy for us because it's all automatically generated after we CAD it in the software. 
So our time saved is this is, is actually quite immeasurable compared to a manual uh, technique. In fact, I would go as far as say it's it's almost impossible to do this by a manual technique. It would take months, months compared to three weeks. Um, compared to a competitor, the leading competitor software is actually quite unstable with this amount of ply sections and ply geometries. So we estimate with the stability that NX provides us within the FiberSim suite, we're gaining about 40 hours in additional time. My name's Aiden, as uh, Jenny previously introduced me, and I'll be talking a bit about Visus, which is a tool that our team uses in uh, for our ECAD, specifically designing our low-voltage wiring harness. Previously, we had used MS Visio for this, which is a kind of off-the-shelf generic um, flowchart schematic um, software. But in 2019, we switched over to using Visus for a lot of reasons that I'll go more into uh, now. I'll start off by talking a bit about some of the challenges that we face and we try to uh, meet in the design of our wiring harness, starting off with a design iteration workload, which is simple enough as it takes a lot of time for us to go from the requirements to a finished design, and then to go back to adapt to any changes that have occurred in other designs or make improvements we want to make. This challenge is compounded by using multiple softwares where we don't have all of that ECAD and MCAD component of our harness design in one software. So we have to take our ECAD either from Visio or Visus and translate that into something in our MCAD, in our case is NX. On the more technical side of performance improvement, one of the main areas we try to focus on in the harness is weight reduction. What you're looking at here is a uh, simple simulation that our team has run to determine um, the sensitivities we have in terms of increasing our performance and our points in competition. Uh, the purple bar graph here shows that a 2% decrease in mass can result in around a 1% increase in competition points over the baselines. This is one big area where we try to improve our harness design. And finally, manufacturing time is one of the big challenges we faced. As David mentioned earlier, ele uh, electric vehicles have a lot of components. And as a result, a wiring harness for our car has grown drastically in complexity over the years, specifically as we switched from being an IC car to an electric car. And decreasing that manufacturing time has been a big um, goal for us to ensure that we have more time for design and more time to test and validate our design at the end of it. So. How does Visas help us to solve these solve these challenges? Um, to illustrate this, I'm going to go over a uh, typical design process using first the uh, MS Visio workflow and the Visas workflow. Um, each of these will have the item and then the estimated time it takes above that. So of course, as all designs uh, do, it starts with discussing the requirements with our project leads which then goes into creating a first iteration schematic which is then reviewed and iterated upon at the same time that we're making the schematic, we're able to route the wire paths in Siemens NX to determine what the actual paths that the uh, wires will take is. And then once all this is done, we can route the wires individually in NX, generate our form boards, and are, we're ready to manufacture. Of course, this isn't actually what happens as there's often multiple iterations of the schematic before the wires are ready to be routed in NX. As well as once the wires are routed, we still often see design changes from sub teams choosing different components, something changing on the electronic side, and et cetera. And these design changes can take up to four or five hours to implement, um, you know, including updating the schematic and updating individual wires in NX. So overall, we estimate that in MS Visio, it takes us about 80 hours total to go from the requir wiring requirements to a ready to manufacture harness. So in Visus, the software, uh, the Workflow starts out pretty similarly, discussing the wiring requirements, creating a first iteration schematic, and so on. And then at the same time as we're doing that, we're able to, of course, route wire pass in Siemens NX. But the difference here is we're able to connect that Visus wiring uh, schematic to the wire paths in NX. And then once we're ready to import our wires over to uh, our MCAD, we simply have to route the wires automatically in NX, a process that takes us around 10 minutes, which is a huge amount of time saved compared to that 15 hours estimate from previously. This also means that when we do make design changes, although it does take us time to update the schematics, we're saving around two hours every time by not having to change the wire routing automatically in NX. And the other benefit of this uh, workflow is that because the wires are routed automatically, we only have to check our schematics for errors. We don't have to check both our schematics and our um, wire routing in NX. And then we generate foam boards and ready to manufacture, which we estimate from um, inception to a manufacturable product 
is around a 45 hours workflow. The key here is that integration that Visas provides us with NX. This is not something we had with Visio, and it's something that has made our design a lot easier, saved us a lot of time, and also made us more confident that our design is errorless. This ends up taking our design time down from 80 hours to 45. Now, there are a couple of other benefits that come with this, starting off with, the des with design time, as I mentioned earlier, but also cost. Being able to in be certain that there are less errors in our harness allows us to um, spend or use less material without having to change things as well. Because we have uh, more time to work on our design, we're saving time in that, that uh, routing step of the wires. We're able to um, focus on our wiring and our connector choices a little bit more um, to ensure that we're purchasing the small, uh, the least we have to, which we estimate enables us to save around $550 every year. Uh, for similar purposes, we're able to lose weight um, because we're able to spend more time focusing on these smaller things. Um, and also, with, you know, this isn't directly a visa's impact, but because of NX, we're able to route the wires in the MCAD and ensure that when we do cut them, we're only cutting the length we need and we don't have to cut any extra to be, um, you know, certain we're getting that right length. And finally, manufacturing time. As I mentioned before, we're able to be a lot more certain that our harness has less errors and spend more time focusing on just one source of errors, the schematic. Um, this allows us to have a harness design that is uh, error-free in manufacturing, which saves us a lot of time that we would usually spend fixing uh, the few errors that, do, that we do find and that do come up as we're running the, those wires. There's also some uh, other, ben other features of Visus that we're planning on using in the future, um, the big one being the BOM integration. This will allow us to generate exactly a list of all the components we need um, automatically from our Visas software, which will help us to um, both save time because we don't have to do this ourselves, but also save money by ensuring we're only getting the exact quantity we need and not getting uh, more or less based on our estimates of how much we need. We also plan on using some electrical simulation that Visas offers to ensure that our wires are connected properly and that our harness has uh, the electrical characteristics we expect. And this will feed back in our, into our design validation. We're able to make changes regarding the electrical characteristics of our harness before we build it, before we test it. And this will allow us to be certain that when we do manufacture our harness and we go to plug in all our devices, everything is going to behave exactly as we expected. So the big benefit that uh, Visas offers us over our previous software is that integration with NX and saves us a lot of time that allows us to focus on some of the um, other aspects of our design and improve it in other ways. Also, be talking a bit about how our team uses SimCenter Star CCM Plus, which is a, a simulation software. It's used on our team both for thermal and aerodynamic analysis, but for now, I'll just be uh, focusing on the aerodynamic elements of it. So, one of the, the the big challenge we face in our aerodynamic design is optimizing aerodynamic performance. Going back to that bar graph I showed earlier, we can see that a five percent increase in the coefficient of lift, meaning that we're generating more downforce, or a 5% decrease in the coefficient of drag, meaning we're generating less drag, can result in a total points increase of around 1% between the two. So this is kind of that general target that we're pushing for is increasing downforce, decreasing drag. And in terms of the software side of things, uh, as David mentioned earlier, um, when it comes to simulating, there's a lot of different steps, including modeling, mesh application solver, and post-processing. And in most software packages, these are separate applications. We have to take the work we've done in modeling and transfer it manually over to the mesh application, over to the solver, which ends up taking a lot of time. And this feeds into the next thing, which is where once we have our design, we want to be able to iterate it, iterate on it to improve it. Um, but because of the software integration step, that can uh, actually eat up a lot of our time, meaning that we're able to make less iterations. So we want to be able to take our first design that we think is going to work, simulate it to see how it actually works, how it actually performs, and then improve upon that and simulate it again to repeat this process and gain the most performance we can. What Star CCM Plus offers that allows us to achieve to meet these challenges and achieve our goals is an integrated solution. All of those methods, we meant, uh, all of those different components I mentioned before, the modeling, mesh application, solver, and post-processing are all available in one software package. This means we don't have to spend time converting our design between the different uh, different processes there, which we estimate in total, just for our dynamics package, saves us around 50 hours of time every year. This uh, 
This time is not just spent sitting idly and our team is able to put this to use to actually improve our design in other ways and to do a more in-depth dive into some of the things we weren't able to focus on before. I'll give two quick examples of these, the first being a uh, aerodynamic uh, design improvement. So what you're looking at here on the left is a uh, aero scene of our car showing the velocity vectors at different points. Um, and on the right is the model in Star CCM Plus. This aero scene is kind of a side profile, so you're looking at the car like that. Um, the top is our first iteration design. Uh, you can see that uh, if you have experience with aerodynamics that there are a few uh, issues with the design. And we noticed this, our aerodynamics leads noticed this, and we're able to improve upon the design. And in the next uh, iteration, or next major review, we're able to show the bottom result, uh, which is a lot uh, more, has a lot improved over the original. Um, using this, we were able to increase over our previous year um, the straight line downforce of our car by 12% and decrease the straight line drag of our car by 4% while increasing the cornering downforce by 19% and decreasing the drag by 1%. Another interesting uh, area that we were um, able to investigate because of this excess time we had was the uh, actual cooling of our car. So what you're looking at here is a aero sweep of the car uh, going from the front profile towards the driver and towards the rear of the car. Using this, we were able to actually determine the high pressure points in our mid-region, which helped us to determine where to place the radiators to make sure that we're getting the best flow through those devices to, to achieve the best cooling in our vehicle. So, as, sim as a similar with Visus and all these other uh, softwares we talked about so far, the big, save the big benefit here is software integration, which saves us design time. And this feeds back into our team and give, in the method of giving us more time to focus on other aspects of our design, which in the case of Aero leads directly to performance improvements for our car. We're we'll passing it over to Genevieve now to talk a bit more about MF Tire. So SimCenter MF Tire is a software for tire modeling uh, and processing the data about our tires. So when we're looking for a software for our tire modeling, there are four main challenges or four things that are important for us. First of all, software rel reliability. In a high-paced environment that we are working in, time is precious, so we want a software that will have minimum bugs that we can rely on and that brings consistent results. Tire, uh, also another thing that is important is that the software has uh, enough functionalities for the kind of analysis we want to make. So tire fitting allows us to properly uh, study the tire behavior to choose a tire that will meet our car needs, as well as integrate, integrate um, our control system. So it's important to have a complete tire modeling software with many functionalities. At MFE, we are a student design team. Uh, we are in a low resource environment and tire fitting is not essential for running the car. Therefore, the software will we are looking for needs to be cost friendly and to have many licenses av available for our students. Um, finally, the main reason why a design team exists is for uh, to learn, right? We want to, to be able to learn and de develop our knowledge about tire modeling. So we want a software that will allow that for us. So what uh, MF Tire brings us as uh, it's a software that is reliable because MF Tire is written by the people who did the magic formula, which is like the formula for tire fitting. So it brings like consistent result and it's reliable. Uh, also, MF Tire does not crash or glitch like the previous software we were using in the past that could just crash in the middle of nowhere without saving anything. Uh, so that helps us in a, our high paced environment. Finally, uh, I'm gonna see that in the next slide also, but Siemens shows us a lot of technical support, so it helps us understand faster and easier the software. Oh, so sorry, yeah, we have like a 10 hour saves just with that uh, software reliability issue compared to the past. Uh, many functionalities. So there's like two functionalities that uh, this software is bringing that we did not have before. So first, SimCenter MF Tire can model, model loaded and effective radius. Uh, so it helps better predict our tire slip ratio and longitudinal uh, forces for a given motor torque. And the other functionality is uh, that it can gives the tire relax relaxation length, which improves uh, con our control system design and, and robustness. Okay, 
cost reduction. Since Elevator MS Tire is offered for free in our Siemens sponsorship package, uh, whereas our other software was sponsored, so it was reduced cost, but it's still uh, we're still saving 150 US a year. Plus, uh, the software we had before, we only had one license, which uh, doesn't help us with time saving because we want to be many people at the same time able to work. Uh, and again, uh, the technical support we have for free is also insane. So this is good for us. Um, so in the next, so in Chad Canadian dollars, we approximately save us 190 per year. Plus, we have more licenses than we had in the past. Oh, and we also save 10 hours. Um, just because uh, we're not only using one license, so we can work uh, many people at the same time. Finally, uh, developing uh, the knowledge. Uh, what is great with uh, Delft Tire is that it comes with documentation and tutorial uh, manuals. So it helps us uh, learn the software super fast and also understand more about the analysis. Also, as I said earlier, there's more functionalities, which helps us do a better analysis and therefore learn more. Uh, and again, the technical support we have helps us uh, whenever we have questions, we just email and they give us like very quick answers. So that helps us a lot uh, with developing our knowledge. So future plans. Uh, back in the days, we were using 18 inches tires. Now we are moving to 16 inches tires uh, due to like analysis we made and like uh, the weight prediction and other um, things we looked at that we decided it was better 16, 16 inches tires. We will continue using Simpson Center MF tire to understand uh, the tire fitting process. And we aim to do more research and work more to integrate better uh, vehicle dynamics and controls. So that's what it looks like. And the last thing I'll touch about, and this applies to all the software we've discussed today, is the training that Siemens offers. One of the big areas that our team struggles with every year is in training the um, vast amount of new members we have in how to use all the softwares we have. Typically, the way that we do this is through senior member-led workshops. This is where our project leads will sit down in one of our computer labs with uh, as many of their new members as they want to come, and they'll go through a you know hands-on tutorial of their first design or first simulation in the software. And while this is a really effective method to learn, it has two main problems, which is it takes a lot of time out of the project lead schedule. And also, it's not something that's entirely feasible in the kind of online driven environment that we have today. What Siemens offers that helps us to solve this problem is a really thorough training library that's available for all of the softwares that we have with them. Um, this is an example of the training library for Star CCM Plus. It includes courses to go over the very basics of the software, how to get started uh, as a new user, and also goes uh, more in depth into some of the more advanced uses of the software. This is the benefits of allowing our new members to train themselves, uh, which is beneficial um, in an online environment where we don't have that, uh, you know, in-person interaction capability, but also allows them to just get, understand the basics themselves and then be more involved in our design faster, which is a better experience for them. The other area where this helps us out is in helping our leads to understand the software they're using better. Previously, with other softwares we've used, all we know about it is just what the previous person knew. We're limited by that amount of knowledge transfer. With this training library, we're able to better understand the full functionalities of all the software we use and find areas to, uh, that we or areas or functionalities we haven't previously been using to help us uh, improve our design efficiency year over year, but also to find different ways to do more analyses and actually improve our design and our performance overall. So, Kind of as a summary, this is a rough estimate of the ways that Siemens software has directly impacted our team, which is, uh, aside from the uh, performance benefits we've some of us have discussed, is a $6,000 reduction in cost, 2.7 kilogram reduction in weight, and around 265 hours in total saved over design. This is also only the ways that Siemens has direct, using Siemens software has directly impacted our team, and I'm sure that there are countless more savings that we simply aren't able to quantify, um, uh, you know, aren't able to quantify. Uh, so that's all from us. If you have any questions, I'd like to open the floor to that. You can also reach out to us on our email or Instagram in the corner. And if you have more questions about our team, you might find some answers on our website, just down there too. Thank you guys for listening. 
Um, we have a question, how often do you use optimization tools available in the Siemens portfolio? A couple of the optimizations we tools we use itself uh, is within the uh, SimCenter FPA. We use, uh, I believe it's solution 400 and something. It's a, a topology optimization tool. And we use that uh, quite quite extensively within our gearbox and upright uh, suspension assembly components. So for that, we use the optimization. Other than that, all of our other optimization models are self-made models that interface with, with NX. Yeah, and to, to add on to, to what was, was mentioned there, um, some of the tools have optimization built into it. Like uh, I know, like for example, Star System Plus is another one that has optimization built into it. But um, we also have another tool called HEADS, which can plug into all different types of tools um, for, for optimization studies. Um, so if anybody has any questions on that, I'd be happy to, to dive further into that. Uh, looks like we have another question here. Um, what do you do with the tire models you fit with MF Tire? Are these used in your in-house lap time sim? Our, how it works is that um, those data helps us uh, figure out what tires uh, are best for our car. So we often like test many different tires and then we can, uh, with the tire modeling, see which tires are the best. So that's basically what we're using for. Perfect, thank you. Um, so there's another question here, where can I find the training websites? I'm going to paste a link in the chat window real quick. Um, that is our uh, academic guidance page. That gives you access to a bunch of different resources, um, content that we built specifically for student competition teams, um, just general guidance on like where you can learn about the software in general, because we have multiple different resources. We have a knowledge base, we have e-learning, we have tutorials that come with the software. So. Um, that website, there's a learning section on there and it provides access to, to all that stuff or it shows you how to get access to those uh, different resources. So, um, Another question here, do you also have courses on campus that teach some of these Siemens tools um, or use Siemens tools? Um, yeah, so, so. I, I can provide an answer to that. Uh, unfortunately, McGill uh, does not offer any courses that use the Siemens PLM software. They tend to use all of the um, uh, I, I will say the next biggest competitor in PLM software. Uh, that being said, we generate our own courses. Like Aiden said, we have our own workshops. Typically between 60 and 70 people attend at a time. And it's not just limited to our team. We do teach other teams on campus as well. And, and, and to add to that, um, I know that we have in, in Siemens a pretty big focus on um, like the the e-learning content, the e-learning myself, like I've taken it myself, and I can say it's it's really fantastic. Um, like just picking out one, like for NX, for example, it, it it walks from very very basic things like just how to make simple parts up through assemblies and really complex stuff. So, even in my own personal experience, I can say it's like walking through a university type course, um, or took me kind of back to that. So it's 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 very very good content, and it's very in depth. There's like, I think there's over 5,000 e-learning courses by now. Um, so there's quite a bit of content there that uh, I believe you would find very useful. Um, so there's another question in here. Uh, what is the biggest tip you would give to the team just developing its Formula Electric program? So that's a great question. Uh, thank you for asking. Um, my advice to a, a Formula Electric team just developing would be to start simple. Uh, very clearly identify what goals you want to make and that timeline. And then from there, you can easily go through what tools and, and, and materials, I guess, that you have to your advantage to leverage those goals. Uh, for example, you may, if you're just new to Siemens software, you may want to uh, only use basic functionality in that software before extending to, you know, the endless world of, of the Siemens software that you can use for analysis. Yeah, one thing I'd like to toss in there, uh, David said, start simple, uh, but also aim to get it done quickly. Um, one of the biggest things that you see every year is, you know, a lot of electric teams go to competition, but not a lot run. And that's just because there's so many complex components and the e-tech is a totally different beast than a mechanical tech. So make sure that you come to competition prepared for that, especially now that they're only hosting one official electric competition. Uh, you know, when you show up, you want to make sure that you have all your e-tech down, you have all of your uh, components running. And the key to that is just getting out and testing your car as early as possible. Looks like another question here. How did you use Siemens for your HV system? Um, I can speak to that a little bit. Uh, currently, the main area where we use Siemens in our uh, high voltage system, uh, well, not the main, the uh, 
only area in our previous design is in the routing of our high voltage wiring. Um, I believe we did a little bit of simulation, uh, thermal simulation of our accumulator or battery pack in uh, Star CCM Plus. But uh, going forward, we're looking uh, to using, a, I believe it's pronounced AIMSIM, uh, which is another simulation suite that Siemens offers that uh, has a lot of specific battery modeling tools. And we're looking at uh, using that to you know, go beyond just our uh, custom simulations of our battery pack. So currently uh, not that much, but I'm sure Chris can speak more to the um, you know, application that Siemens software has towards that. Yes, thank you. Um... I won't really dive too, too far into it, but yeah, I will say AIMSIM has a whole plethora of different types of simulation that you can get into. Like I've seen um, how you have the capability of basically just feeding your requirements. And based off of those requirements, it will spit out the battery technology, how many cells to use, what to connect in parallel and series. And then you can run a series of, of different simulations on that. So charge and discharge cycles, how it holds up in different environments, uh, thermal management simulations, um, even stuff if you go off and, and buy uh, cells and you're doing testing um, and fitting that information back into your models. So there's there's quite a, a suite of different um, capabilities that it has on that front. Um, I will say this, if, if anybody's interested in learning more about that, I know that's a very quick blurb on that, but um, I, I do have videos that kind of go in more in depth on those, those topics. Um, and it is geared more specifically for student competition teams. So it keeps it a little bit more concise. In regards to the other high voltage uh, components like motors and inverters, uh, we use off the shelf ones, so we don't use any uh, Siem uh, Siemens tools in the you know design or simulation of those. Um, but I do believe they offer some options there as well. Um, did you guys make any radiator simulations with uh, Star CCM Plus? If yes, how is your experience? Yeah, so we we actually do have a radiator um, model within our Star CCM, uh, you know, bigger model. Right now, we are actually developing a full testing bench to to compare our results from from our simulations to real life. So I cannot comment on how is your experience yet because I do, don't have the answers on the validity of the simulation. But it is something we're working on. And perhaps tune into our LinkedIn page. We'll probably post some results there. I will add on that last comment. Um, I do have an article that I built uh, with a uh, another FSA team. Um, that shows how to go in and actually build out a radiator uh, in Star System Plus so you can effectively get the correct pressure drop and understand the true like mass flow rate going through a radiator core. Um, and it shows how to do that in the context of a full uh, external aerodynamic simulation on a car. So um, I know a lot of teams for a long time have been trying to understand how to do that. So that article really kind of lays it out for them. So I, I believe that should, should help if you're looking to do something like that. Um, in, in by the way, that article is in that guidance page that I uh, put in the, the the link in the chat. So it's under the student competition team content. Okay, I don't see any other questions. If you're interested in getting our software or having questions about it, capability or anything along those lines, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to get you all set up. But uh, I thank you again for attending and uh, thank you the McGill FSAE team. I think that was fantastic. So thank you again. Just, uh, just to touch on uh, some, some things we offer for sponsorships to some companies, we, uh, we're very open to working with you as a company and maybe uh, developing a small prototype and giving our advice on some prototypes in, in, from our experience with uh, automotive design. So you can, uh, if, you're, if you're looking to develop a relationship there, we can work with you and you can work with us to, to further both of our organizations and we can use Siemens tools to really progress that much quicker than a competitor tool. So thank you everyone for attending. Yep, thanks for attending and uh, thanks for having us, Chris. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you everybody, have a good day.